there are a lot of surprises, I think. I think there are a lot of counterintuitive things that we're finding um, when you look at data versus human experience. And the data is teaching us there are a lot of things about startups um, that we ordinarily w would overlook. When I first started this, doing this research, you know, we, we found that it, at the place I was working at the time, the criteria we focused on the most for startups, which was mostly the team, uh, the technology, the uh, market that they're in, um, a lot of those variables really weren't correlated with outcomes of startups five, seven, or ten years later. Uh, so we realized the things we're looking at, statistically speaking, just aren't actually correlated with the kinds of outcomes we want. So that was a bit insulting at the time. <laughs> but, but then we found there were a bunch of other variables that we knew about, we just didn't look at, look at as closely, that were much more correlated with outcomes. So I think we realized the data said, oh my gosh, we're looking at the wrong things. And if we change what we look at, it's not like we would get a 5% improvement, but it was like 4, 5, or 6x better results. Um, so for example, uh, it turns out if a startup goes into the marketplace with a better performing product, so better performance is the strategy, um, that's actually one of the lowest probability strategies that a startup can have, and it's somewhere around 14%. So what I just said is if a startup actually has a better product, that's a reason it has, is likely to have low odds which is counterintuitive because that's what most people do, right? They, they figure out how to solve a problem better and they start a business, right? And we're saying actually that's a really low odd strategy um, because what happens is you end up going head to head with the incumbents that are in the market who are bigger than you and, and they get very threatened and have to respond. Um, for example, on the other hand, if you just go into the bottom of the market with a cheaper, worse product, uh, nobody gets threatened and your odds of survivor, survival can go up five or six X. So sometimes it's better to be cheap and crappy than really high performance. I think a challenge for venture capital is it's always been a very labor-intensive business. Um, and people don't think of it that way, but it, it's human beings, uh, investors sitting there, meeting startups, forming personal feelings about those companies and technologies. Um, if you want to go find deals in another country, you have to fly or send somebody over there to meet people and get to know the different companies. So in a 100% labor-intensive business that's based mostly on intuition and judgment, um, we're finding it just doesn't really scale well uh, with the way the world is changing. And we're, we're finding deals are more concentrated thinly over wider geographies than they used to be. So there used to be a lot of concentration, for example, in Silicon Valley. What we're finding now is the best deals are actually being spread all over the world in little cities all over the place and ever less concentrated in, in the U.S. and Silicon Valley. So as a venture capitalist, how do you go find the best deals when they don't live around you? And, and you can't send somebody to every city in the world in the hopes of finding maybe one deal. Um, so that's one of the nice things about data science is if you do it right, you, you can find ways of monitoring and tracking companies and seeing where the best companies are uh, without even leaving your office. And then you can call them. Um, but if, if the world's getting flatter and, and deals are getting more distributed and dispersed, uh, data science is one way you can stay on top of that deal flow. It always helps to get the right people in the same room, but, but I think um, one of the things I'm looking forward to is just showing how data is changing the way our fund does venture capital. And what I like about events like this is you have a mix of other funds, you have companies, you have startups, um, and it's a safe place where you can sort of share what you're doing. Um, and and you, know, you don't give away the, the deep secret sauce, but, but the ability for everyone to take a little risk and kind of share what's working for them, and especially where they're struggling, is really rare and really good. Because um, I think we, we have more to gain together uh, and sharing some of those best practices uh, than we have to gain by competing against each other and keeping it all to ourselves. Mm -hmm.